Guess who's back? Back again. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are an OG day one or you know the Jeep. I actually got this really cute mirror, if you can kind of see it from Target, that I am bringing home. I stopped in my old stomping grounds in this parking lot to bring you guys a message that I've had a lot of requests to film. But if you guys follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should. I'll leave it right here. But you would have seen that I got to be a guest speaker, which was so cool. Such an awesome privilege to have to be able to speak into these youth groups. It was so fun. So if you guys are here from there, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. Make sure you subscribe. Um, but yeah, if you are from there, then you would, would have already seen and heard this message. But I had a lot of people who weren't in the Zooms that wanted to know what we talked about and what my message was. So that's what we're here today doing. If you're taking notes, the title of this message is Don't Waste the Suffering and the first bullet point is not if but when so when we look at the definition of suffering it says the state of undergoing pain distress or hardship so we look at that definition and we can all say to ourselves yes I have felt that I have experienced that and that is something that we all connect with we all suffer we live in a broken world which means that there is sin, which means there are crappy things, to put it lightly. Suffering is inevitable, and we can look at this from a biblical background and see in 1 Peter 5.10, which by the way, you guys, all the verses that I'm taking today for this message will be down below. 1 Peter 5.10, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered for a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So we look at this verse, and it doesn't say, in case you suffer. It doesn't say, if you suffer it says after you suffer because god knows that we are going to suffer and that's just part of life and that's not something to be afraid of that's just something to know we're not meant to suffer just to suffer okay there's so much purpose in it but it's up to us to take that and to grasp it and to really be intentional so that we don't waste the suffering something that i like to tell myself is don't just go through this summer make sure you are growing through this so the next point is watch your mouth and your thoughts because our words are so so powerful and it is crucial that we understand the power that they have the way that we speak to our situations especially the perspective that we take on them um, is really gonna make or break us so for example in quarantine I actually am so thankful I am still working and I'm super blessed that I can say that but there are times too when um, like weekends or something let's say I wake up and I'm like <sighs> another day in quarantine I don't want to do this this sucks I'm bored I want to see my friends I want to go do stuff um, I'm anxious I'm worried about this I'm just like in a really bad mood and in a really bad mindset we can wake up and we can be upset we can be negative or we can wake up and we can be positive and even if we don't feel positive we can choose to think positively so the effect that this has on us is so much bigger than what we give it credit for because throughout your day then whether you woke up in a negative mindset or a positive mindset that's what you're going to experience more than likely throughout your day because you're going to be focused on those things so one of my favorite books um talks about this it talks about what you're looking for you will find she says okay today i want you to look for a blue jeep and with me having a jeep i'm always looking for jeeps but not really blue jeeps so i thought okay i'm gonna look for a blue jeep and in that day, I saw seven blue Jeeps, and I'm not kidding, I'm not making this up, but because I was looking for them, I found them. And if I, if I wasn't looking for them, if I went about my day normally, I wouldn't have even realized that there were blue Jeeps passing me because I wasn't looking for them. And in the same way, we need to be looking for goodness, for positive things. So in the same way, we need to be looking for the positives. I don't think that positive lives just happen i think that they're made intentionally and by choice i know that it's up to us to be looking for those things so just like we looked for the blue jeep then i encourage you guys to look for the goodness and even though the circumstances right now with the pandemic and everything are difficult or whatever you're going through at this time if you're watching this later at a date or something whatever your hardship looks like don't focus on that so much and i know it's hard i know that the loudest noises the loudest voices in our heads are the negative ones but we don't have to settle for that we can find goodness even the simple things the sunshine five minutes of extra sleep just small things that you don't normally look for or think of just make sure you're giving those things power too because those are still great things and even though they might be small they add up and once we can change our mindset just to get a little bit personal with you guys i 
always like to be personal with you um, not because it's easy but because I want to be relatable and I want you guys to look at me as someone who is going through it right by your side um, when I went through my hardest hardship was my brain injuries I had three concussions within eight months and it was a six-year um, journey of starting from scratch from not remembering my friends from super super bad depression and anxiety from being told i'll never graduate from being told i'll never i'll never drive um yeah in the lowest point i was really negative back then as well and honestly i think going through hard things it is hard to be positive i actually can thank god for the hardest time in my life because he used it and he brought so much goodness from it and he gave me a voice through it he strengthened my faith through it um he worked so much through it but it wasn't until i switched my perspective and i started looking for the good things that i was able to see that i can actually be thankful for the hardship and that's what i hope that we can do with this pandemic i hope that when we look back we actually look back with a positive attitude we look back and say look what satan tried to do and look what god made out of this satan is trying to get us to be quiet to be fearful to be um scared of the unknown but our god reminds us that he is in control he has already overcome literally everything and look at what we're doing we're zooming we are closer to god than ever we are making intentional decisions to make the best out of this and to not waste our suffering but you have to remember that that is up to you and up to me to do to be intentional and to use this time for the best be aware as well um what you're feeding your mind during the day too even when you're like not there so like at work if i'm doing something Thing that doesn't take like a lot of thought process or whatever i'll just put in my airpods and listen to christian music or i'll listen to an uplifting podcast something that's gonna be like speaking truth into me and speaking positive thoughts into me rather than me sitting with my own thoughts because sometimes that's the hardest part for me is to control my own thoughts and to have to do that all day is a struggle um because thinking positively and watching your thoughts and your words is not just a switch you don't just get to decide that like hey i'm a positive person because it's not that easy it's an everyday exercise but it can be done but little things like just being aware of what you're listening to and what you're watching um those things actually do affect you so something that i like to do is just like turn my christian music on in the morning and start off on the right foot make sure i'm not following people that like drain energy from our little things that you can be doing to just push yourself in the right direction one of my favorite verses from a song is you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it to good that's exactly what's going to happen with this pandemic because god already knows he's not surprised he's still in control and everything that satan is trying to destroy and kill right now god is going to bring so much life out of and so much goodness and um his promises are true and so we just have to cling to that romans 5 three through four says not only so but we also find glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope and i can't relate to this verse anymore than I already do because when I went through my brain injury, that was where I persevered. That was where I was really finding out who Summer was. My character was being molded and that's where I found hope was because if God can bring me through the depths of what felt like the, the lowest low, the depths of walking through hell, then he can take me through literally anything and nothing is impossible with him by my side. So we know that through our suffering is when we get closer to the Father, when we are pruning our lives to be better, when we are just allowing him to mold us there are some things that we could never do without having gone through something you know what i mean if i never would have went through my brain injuries i would not be here i would not be on youtube i would not have a voice to speak about these things i would not have the confidence i would not have the ability to relate to people there are so many blessings that come out of suffering but we have to be aware and intentional through them so that we can come out like this another thing that i want to just touch on quick is that god has already overcome all of this and i know i said this earlier but it's such an important important thing to get through our minds that God has already won heaven is waiting you know like we don't have to fear we don't have to live in fear of this pandemic or of any suffering or hardship and think that we will stay here because life is full of seasons okay so like seasons they come and go and the seasons in our lives they come and go too you will not suffer forever as we go through ups and downs but they can all have purpose if we let them have purpose Romans is so good you guys Romans just speaks so much life but Romans 8 35 and 37 says who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And then it goes on to say in verse 37, no, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
we are more than conquerors speak that to yourself that is the truth that should be playing in your head don't let the fear don't let the anxiety the insecurities all of that get to you and I know it's easy because um, we are human and we have those tendencies but continue to speak these things over you because God will work in your heart and he will start to transform your thoughts so the next point is called suffer for something there are times in our lives when we suffer without choosing and that would be like this pandemic nobody chose for this to happen um, but then there are other times in our lives where we can step out in faith and we can actually choose to suffer it sounds a little bit crazy to think of something like that but for instance there are times when we are going with the flow nothing's really great nothing's really bad but we're getting through it and i don't think god calls us to do that i think god wants us to live to the fullest to have life to the full um, and sometimes that means going through uncomfortable situations and sometimes that even means choosing uncomfortable situations so for me i was in a lot of you guys already know this but i was in a very long relationship relationship for five years and I don't have anything bad to say about him but our relationship wasn't healthy we both had a lot of growing to do and all of these things um, there was a lot of hurt on both sides and it just was unhealthy but for so long I couldn't get myself to leave I couldn't get myself to um, quit I wanted to keep going I thought that love didn't give up um, and I didn't want to give up but there came a time when I was more scared of living without him than I was scared of being in an unhealthy relationship and it wasn't until I decided that the girl that I wanted to be was worth suffering for that the girl that God called me to be was worth suffering for and so I chose to basically break my own heart by breaking up with this person and I knew it was gonna cause heartache I knew it was gonna be terrible and when I say terrible 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 uh, losing your best friend and your boyfriend of five years is not easy and it's it's hard um, but I knew that if I wanted to be the woman that not only I desired to be but that God desired me to be I had to walk through that there are certain things where God wants to call us over here but if we're over here we can't get there without going through the middle part okay we can't just jump we can't go around we have to go through it and that's hard but it's so worth it and if you want to be the person God created you to be you have to be willing to put your life in his hands and trust him with it and that means trusting him when things are easy when things are good but also trusting him when things are hard and when you have to walk out on a limb by yourself even though you're not by yourself he's with you but you know what I mean when you feel really alone um, to do something that's actually gonna hurt it's gonna be hard this could be breaking up this could also be asking for help or going to counseling this could be taking a look into those parts of us we all have that we're hiding something that hurts that's deep um, that no one knows about but we know about it it could be looking in at that and bringing it to life um, to work through there's so many different aspects of life where we can choose to suffer for something do you trust God enough to suffer for him Psalms 34 and 19 the righteous person faces many troubles but the Lord comes to rescue each time not 80% hundred percent and we can have faith in that the last point that I want to make is called push and pull and this is something that like came to mind um, a few months ago I've kept on my heart since then and the thing with this is that with God it's a relationship it's a push and pull meaning that if we don't push God won't pull because it's a relationship and we choose this we have free will we can choose to be in relationship with God but it's not a one-sided thing so I have to push even if it's five percent I have to push in order for him to pull to move um, but I think that we have more than 5% that we can give a lot more than 5% We can't go through a season of suffering and hope that God will bring so much beauty and goodness out of this If we're not moving if we're stuck in this So for instance with my concussions, let's go back if I sat in my season of suffering and I gave up I didn't go to my physical therapy my speech therapy like freaking four times a day If I didn't do that if I didn't go to counseling I'm gonna take my medicine if I didn't wake up when I was supposed to wake up all these things if I didn't do those things I wouldn't have been able to because it's a push and pull. It's a relationship I just think it's important to know that we can't be lazy that um, in order to not waste our suffering We have to also be working. I just want to encourage you guys um, to use this season to grow It's such a good opportunity, but we have to think of it as an opportunity and not as something that's negative um, don't let this pass this season this quarantine whatever you want to call this don't let it pass without being intentional don't let it pass without growing closer to God without um, making yourself better without developing new habits that are gonna make you into the person that you want to be don't let it pass don't let it pass you by and just be something you look back on as a negative memory. Look back on this and see all of the things that God worked through you and for you through this season. Um, like Stephen Furtick said on his Twitter, the goal isn't to just get through this. The goal is for God to show you something in it that makes you better on the other side. And I could not agree more with that. And so I also have some discussion questions that I gave the, the kids in the group 
um, that I spoke to. So I will leave those down below too. It's just nice to journal about them. Just look in your heart, pray over them. Um, and then I also have some songs that went with my message that I just felt like was really good to relate to the message. And the verses will be in the description bar as well. My camera's gonna die, but I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it encourages you. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Love you. Bye. Some more.